Hello, this is Father Randy Sly with another installment of Day by Day, where each day we take a look at a reading from Holy Scripture found in the Daily Mass. And today is Thursday of the sixth week of Easter. Today is also a memorial. Today is the memorial of St. Philip Neri. And as I always like to tell you, if this is a good time for you to do a little Google search and find out more about uh, St. Philip Neri and the way in which he was used by God so mightily in the life of the church. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Paul left Athens and went to Corinth. There he met a Jew named Aquila, a native of Pontus, who had recently come from Italy with his wife Priscilla, because Claudius had ordered all the Jews to leave Rome. He went to visit them, and because he practiced the same trade, stayed with them and worked, and worked, for they were tent makers by trade. Every Sabbath, he entered into discussions in the synagogue, attempting to convince both Jews and Greeks. When Silas and Timothy came down from Macedonia, Paul began to occupy himself totally with preaching the word, testifying to the Jews that the Messiah was Jesus. When they opposed him and reviled him, he shook out his garments and said to them, Your blood be on your heads. I am clear of responsibility. From now on, I will go to the Gentiles. So he left there and went to a house belonging to a man named Titus Justus, a worshiper of God. His house was next to a synagogue. Crispus, the synagogue official, came to believe in the Lord along with his entire household, and many of the Corinthians who heard believed and were baptized. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, we are now in Corinth, down in Achaia. It's south of Athens and has become the center culturally and uh, politically of that entire area. And it is here that Paul is going to establish one of the strongest churches, the church at Corinth. It's not a church that is uh, without, uh, you know, problems. And, you know, there's two letters that we have written to the uh, Corinthian church and one that they also believe was written. And there were some things that took place in the church, but it's because it was strong and growing and vibrant. And yes, it did have some problems. But before the church actually began, it was just Paul and two individuals named Aquila and Priscilla who came there, came to Achaia from Italy. So they were also tent makers, just as Paul was. And as St. Luke uh, explains here, the reason that they're in Corinth is they were expelled from Rome uh, because all Jews were told that they had to leave. Now, what's interesting about that is that according to uh, a, a historian, a Roman historian by the name of Suetonius, the reason for the expulsion of the Jews by uh, Claudius had to do with the debates about the Christ, the Messiah. And so it looks as though that the reason for the expulsion of the Jews had to do with the fact that they were getting information, they were talking about the Christ. And, and so there were things that were going on beyond Judaism itself. And there's a good possibility that prior to their arrival in Corinth, that Aquila and Priscilla were already Christians. Whatever case that might be, here they are in the city of Corinth. Paul has joined up with them. They are uh, sharing together in a trade so that they're able to make some money to live on. And it is here in Corinth that uh, Timothy and Silas catch up uh, with Paul. They were supposed to meet him in Athens, and probably when they got to Athens, they were told, just keep on going, he's down in Corinth. So there they are, they are with him, and the minute that the two arrive, it is at this point that Paul sets his heart on just full-time ministry. Prior to this, he was making tents along with Aquila and Priscilla, but now he found himself with his apostolic company in place 
able to just really emphasize more and more his ministry and teaching. And when they responded negatively to what he was saying, he just basically shook the dust off his feet in a, in a uh, you know, symbolic sense and says, you know, your blood be on your heads. I'm clear of the responsibility. In other words, I have told you faithfully that Jesus is the Messiah. You're not going to believe. And you know what? I am not going to go to the synagogues. I am going to go to the Gentiles. So at this point, there is a, an intentional shift in Paul to go to the Gentiles. Now, he still ministers in synagogues from time to time, but his primary heart is to reach out to the Gentile people. Now, what's interesting is he basically goes and talks to a man named Titus Justus, who uh, was a Greek, but was a worshiper of God, and he lived next door to a synagogue. So even though Paul did not go to the synagogues like he did before, Titus Justus must have involved and invited Crispus, who was the synagogue official, to come next door and listen to Paul, because he too became a believer. And so now we have Aquila, Priscilla, we have Titus Justus, we have Crispus, we have their households, and they are all believing. And so the work of God is beginning to take root in the city of Corinth. And as you know, this is a city that historically has been a linchpin for the work of the gospel in so many other places and has been uh, placed in, uh, in sense as a, a permanent record of the church through the inclusion of the two epistles to the Corinthians by St. Paul. So may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts together be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Well, may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.